What's up guys, Chris Schwartz Edmiston here from Schwartz Edmiston Web Design. In today's video, we're gonna be looking at how to create this cool fade in text animation on page load in Squarespace. So the way we put keyframe animation in CSS onto a website is actually very simple. Uh, so I'm just gonna walk you through this, the process uh, from the very, very beginning. So if we want to create a keyframe animation, all we have to do is write at keyframes, and then we have to give our keyframe animation a name. So in this case, my name for this animation is gonna be fade text anim, short for animate, and then I'm gonna open up some curly brackets. So we haven't defined anything yet. We've simply uh, registered our keyframe animation. We're, we're telling the browser, hey, we're gonna be creating a keyframe animation and this is the name of our animation. So the next thing that we have to do is we have to define keyframes for the animation. So obviously the animation starts at 0%. So I'm gonna open up some curly brackets and we're gonna define our properties for this animation at 0%. So the first thing that I know I wanna do is I wanna set the opacity to zero at the very start of the animation because I want it to be fading in, fading up and in. So the other thing that I have to do at 0%, the start of the uh, animation, is I want to translate this content down 30 pixels because I want it to fade up and in on page load. So the way that we're going to do that is with a transform translate 3D and we're, we want to move it zero pixels on the X axis. We want to move it down 30 pixels on the Y axis and we want to move it back zero pixels on the Z axis. So this is at the start of our animation our content is going to be 0% opacity and it's going to be bumped down by 30 pixels. So now we can define the end of the animation at 100%. And uh, at 100%, I want the opacity to be one. And I'm just gonna copy this uh, translate 3D transform property. And I'm going to change this to zero because at its final, the end of the animation, we want it to appear normally uh, we don't want it to be bumped down at all. So now we have a very basic animation. It's going to start at 0% opacity and then move up 30 pixels, animating to one per or a full 100% opacity. So the, the only thing that we have left to do is then tell the browser what elements we want this animation to apply to. So Basically, I want everything in this index section. If it's the first index section, I want everything on the page uh, in this index section to animate, to be animated. So we have to find a class that contains all of this uh, content that will be a good candidate for animation. So if I just right click over the content, um, we can look through and find a class, find a container that houses all of the content. So I'm just gonna start at the very top. So here's our, our section, and every section in an index page gets a, this index page class. So we know that we only want to target the first index page in an index, um, in an index in Squarespace. So keep that in mind, we only wanna target the first index page. And within that first index page, uh, here is a class that contains everything, but it also has a lot of padding on it. So I don't want to animate something that has a bunch of padding just for the fear that it might mess up some of the layout. So instead of animating this class, if we come down one more to this SQS layout class, you can see that it's housing all of the content on the, in the index section, but it doesn't have any padding or anything. So this is like a really good candidate for animation because it houses everything and it doesn't have any padding. So again, we want to target index pages, but we only want to target the first index page. So I'm going to write first child. And again, we want to target that SQS layout class because that houses all of the content. 
So uh, this takes care of index page sections. So if you have a bunch of index pages on your site, uh, always the content in the first section is going to animate up and in. So that's awesome. We don't have to write this for every index page individually. This is just a universal rule where all of our, our content in our first index page section is gonna animate up and in. So that's great. But what happens if we have just a regular page on our website that we also want that animation to apply to? Because it would be weird if index page content was animating but not regular page content. It just wouldn't feel, um, it would just feel off because that's sort of like a staple of the brand of the website now. So why are some pages doing this and some pages aren't? So in order to get all content in uh, like the, the intro section of regular pages, let's hop into the CSS. So any content in the intro section, the intro section has a class of intro and uh, we can't use the SQS layout class like we did with the index pages because in regular pages, this SQS layout class has padding. And again, we don't wanna animate something with padding just for fear of messing up the layout. So if we come down one more, this .sqs row class will house all of the content in the intro, but it doesn't have any padding. So that's a really good candidate and for regular pages. So I'm gonna add a comma because we want to target this, but we also want to target .intro. That should be a dot and a capital I, .intro. And then within .intro, we want to target .sqs row. So now it doesn't matter if it's an index page, whatever's in that first section is gonna animate. Doesn't matter if it's a regular page, whatever's in that intro section is going to animate as well. So we have our, our elements targeted. Now we just have to tell these elements to do this animation. So the way that we do that is we write animation, that's the property, add a colon, and then we have to tell the browser that this is the animation that we want it to animate. So I'm just gonna copy and paste that, the name of the animation there. Then we can define how long we want the animation to run. So how long does it take to get from 0% to 100%? So we want the animation to be two seconds, and then we can give it an easing property. So I'm gonna give it a property of ease. So I, I want the animation to kind of start out a little bit faster and then slowly ease up into its final resting position. So now that we have everything defined, I can save that and I can click back to my home page, and you should be able to see, perfect, we have our text animating uh, just like we want it to. And if I go to the shop page, that shop title you can see is also animating up and in. So because there's all of this editor interface and stuff, you'll probably see it kind of like animating twice. Uh, but on the real deal, if you open it in like an incognito window or something like that, um, and you refresh, it only animates once. One thing that I'm noticing though, is that when we started at the very beginning, um, you're kind of at risk for the animation starting and then like finishing before all of the content is loaded. So one thing that we can do, and Squarespace actually does this uh, on the Hayden template, um, and I'll, I'll come show you. So their animation is on this description wrapper class. And if we come down to the animation, you can see, so they have opacity zero and they're only translating by 10 pixels. Uh, but then they have another keyframe at 5% where the opacity is also zero. So they're not starting the animation at 0% and then going to 1% just from zero to 100. At when 5% of the, an the animation has elapsed, they're still at 0% opacity. So that almost like, it kind of makes it like there's a little bit more of a delay to the animation, which allows some of the content on the page to load. And you also don't have any risk of like accidental flicker or something like that, uh, where the text would be loading uh, before the animation has been triggered. 
and then so it would be it would like flash on the screen and then go to zero percent opacity and then animate when you add another keyframe a little bit into the animation where it's still at zero then that just prevents uh, any of those problems from occurring so uh, because I have uh, like pretty heavy images on my website uh, and it can take a little bit of time for them to load I'm gonna do my next keyframe at 25 percent of the animation I'm going to open up some curly brackets and I'm just going to copy this same information that was at 0%. So now uh, if our if you think our animation is 2 seconds long and 25% of the way through, that's half of a second. So after half of a second, uh, then our animation will actually like start. Um, so that will take care of some of those problems that we could potentially run into. So if I open up my incognito browser again and refresh, you can see there's a little bit more of a delay. There's a half a second delay. So it just gives it the other images and other content on the website a little bit more of a chance to load before the animation triggers. And also we will never get any animation flashing or anything like that because uh, we're delaying the animation until after uh, half of a second so that's it guys that is how easy it is to add this cool animation on page load uh, one thing that is very important is this transform property it needs to be prefixed so for different browsers uh, they understand these instructions a little bit differently and so they need translations to to render the animation property properly so uh, that's what's called uh, vendor prefixing, where you're actually giving slightly translated instructions for different browsers. So I have all of the vendor prefixes already saved over here. So I'm just gonna copy and paste them into the website because it would take forever to write them hand by hand in the tutorial. So I'm just going to paste those in. So these are the like the WebKit, the MOS, the MS, and the O. Uh, those just help it run on the different browsers. But anyway, uh, the point being, you just need these prefixes to make sure that it's always rendering properly on different browsers. So that is it, guys. That is how easy it was. We now have the, f the content from our first section, whether that be an index page or a regular page, always animating in when the page loads. I'll refresh the page for you one more time. Very cool effect very simple to do but just really adds that extra touch to your squarespace website all right guys that is it for me i will see you in the next one